Rex Deus are a bloodline that trace their origins back to the 24 high priests of the Temple of Jerusalem, which includes the family of Jesus. And according to Holy Mother of the Church, and who are we to doubt their word, Jesus was single and had no children. But in actual fact, like all Jews of his time, he was obliged by Jewish custom and tradition to marry and procreate. He was doubly in, uh, empowered to do this because he was also a rabbi and the heir to the throne of the line of David. So he had to produce an heir. And one of the most closely guarded secrets in European history is the fact that he founded a bloodline known as the Desposini, which are still extant in Europe today. When I go to England, I stay with one member of it, and when I go to Nice, I have breakfast with another. And descendants of Jesus are all around you, and many of the people who are the true descendants of it, Jesus of Nazareth don't even know it. Well, I've just used a term which is inaccurate, Jesus of Nazareth. The problem is that Nazareth didn't exist at the time of Jesus. He was Jesus the Nazarene. He was a member of an esoteric cult attached to the Essene order, an initiatory form of spirituality which is still being practiced in secret today. And the Rex Deus families outwardly practice the religion of their place and time, but secretly amongst themselves follow their own path. And shortly after I published Rex Deus, I had a letter on very impressive note paper with a coat of arms at the top, and it was a very brief and terse letter. It said, Dear authors, you should really have consulted me before you rushed so precipitately into print. We must talk, or better yet, meet. And it was signed with a well-known Scottish family name. So I rang this gentleman and I said, well, Professor, I said, uh, we filled in a lot of gaps in the story with our knowledge of medieval history. Where did you go wrong? He said, you didn't, dear boy, it's just incomplete. Do you want the rest? And the result was a book called Custodians of Truth. And between the two of them, they traced the influence of these families on the development of European culture, and that influence was quite profound, particularly in spiritual matters. They were the families responsible for the founding of the military order of the Knights Templar, and after that was suppressed, several centuries later, they played a seminal role in the foundation of the worldwide fraternity of Freemasonry, which is still running and still extant today. So their influence is all pervasive. Now when I went to go and see this man for the very first time, he said, come on a Friday and arrive before sunset. And the warning bell started to go off. My mother was Jewish. And when we got to his house, there was a dining table set for four, for myself and my partner, Marilyn Hopkins, and for him, Hugh and his wife. And there were two Yarmulkes by the gentleman's plates. There was showbread on the sideboard and a menorah. They were still practicing a form of initiatory Judaism which traced its roots back long before the time of Jesus and its original origins come from Egypt. <laughs> that story deserves to be told. It became the basis for the best-selling novel by Dan Brown, The Da Vinci Code. It was the only true thing in it because most of his symbolism in it is a load of horseshit excuse the expression, but that's what it was. And it's a story which is riveting, because these people acquired power in Europe very, very early on at the time of Charlemagne and are still in positions of power today. And there is a, a chivalric order which is still running called the Order of the Fleur de Lis. Membership is by invitation, but to hold office within that order you have to be a member of one of the families of the Rex Deus group. And they cover some very, very powerful people. What their agenda is today, I haven't the faintest idea. But they're still about, and they're still exerting massive influence behind the scenes, all very quietly. And I, for one, would love to know what their agenda is.